Our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven. He blessed and he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of all the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This ends the gospel reading for today. Let us pray. O Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Rock, our Redeemer, Amen. This is one of my favorite Bible stories. This is one that we learn as kids and take with us for a long time. It is the story of five loaves and two fishes and how that fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children, I've always wondered, you know, didn't they matter and why weren't why was that mentioned, but that's another topic for another day. Well, see, I love this story and I I see it as somewhat of an ultimate potluck. Jesus tells his disciples to go, gather these items, and then we will feed the masses. Now, if I have learned nothing about Berks County over the past seven years living here, is that you put eggs in your soup, and I'm still trying to understand that, but also that people like to eat. And our church and the events that we have at the church is no different. And that is a good thing, because the importance of gathering together for a meal translates into celebrating communion together in new and unique ways with with the drive-through communion that is scheduled for 9 30 to 11 again this morning you know we are breaking bread together in individual cars all lined up even if we're not together and we have also celebrated our generosity and fellowship with, with having multiple potlucks, potlucks over the past few years. Now, when we p- plan uh, to have a potluck, it's usually around some kind of celebration, like when we, um, when we welcome new members into the church or if there's a baptism or something else that we celebrate during worship, or maybe it's just a random Sunday in June because we want to have time to fellowship and be together. For the past few years, we have also hosted a free meal on Grandparents' Day. And we even encouraged our older members to bring their grandchildren and our younger members to bring their grandparents. Like I said, we like to feed people. Now, whenever we schedule a potluck, we. We never have a sign-up sheet or ask certain people to bring meat while others are encouraged to bring a dessert. We, We just ask for food. And people question that. And I say, well, 
if we get together on Sunday afternoon after church and we have 10 different kinds of baked beans, then that's what we will eat and we'll have time of fellowship together. Now we don't get five loaves of bread and two fish, thankfully, when we get that time together, but in our time together, in our fellowship, as we gather, there's always been more food than we can ever eat as a group. There are even times and even certain items that I have started to look forward to, and I will admit that if a person doesn't bring their specialty, I may be a bit disappointed. <laughs> but when everybody contributes, it is just a wonderful gift to share and be together, even if somebody can't bring anything or forgets. So I like to think about this miracle story from our gospel reading this morning like that, just almost like an exciting potluck. But Jesus really thinks that it is important to gather people together. You know, he, he could have told people to leave. That's what the disciples wanted. He, he was getting tired after all, and he, he went away. He was going away from the towns because he was mourning his friend John, which is not in this part of the gospel lesson. And, and he did want to go away from people for a little bit, but since he was being followed, and because, because we know Jesus as this loving, compassionate man that he is, he didn't ask to be left alone. In fact, he actually did the opposite. And he welcomed people to him and then and then he fed them when i was growing up and we were trying to get a youth group established in my church where my my friends and i could hang out once or twice a month on like a sunday evening the leaders always had this thinking that that you needed to to as teenagers they needed to be fed both spiritually as well as literally now, pizza was always a common choice, but our time together was beneficial because we learned about each other. We shared with each other. We, we cared for one another. We studied together and we ate, but we had that time of fellowship as teenagers being, sped, spirit, being fed spiritually and literally. You know, Jesus took the time to feed the people physically by asking his disciples to gather that small amount of food that turned able, turned, uh, was able to be uh, feeding the masses. He also fed them spiritually because he preached to them. He did this by saying words like, I am doing right now to a computer screen and, and let me tell you, I really miss looking at other people. But Jesus, he, he did this preaching out loud and he, he was leading and trying to give people spiritual nourishment by what he did and by what he said. He put his money where his mouth is. He put his faith where hungry people were. He fed people. He taught people. He loved people but he did not chase people away. Everyone was invited to the table. When we had our last drive through communion a few weeks ago, I stood outside in the sun welcoming cars for an hour and a half, doing a check-in and celebrating communion. Now, I am not complaining when I say this, but I only had about a five minute break somewhere right in the middle between all, the other, between all the cars that were coming. And you know what? I absolutely loved it. And I was moved by our time together. And I believe that, that other people were as well. We as a church family, we, we were able to wave to each other from the cars. We're able to 
welcome a visitor who uh, has a connection to the church, but uh, came to celebrate communion with us. Everyone, everyone is invited to our table. And everyone is important enough to take just a few minutes with each carload of people and join together in that holy meal. You know, Jesus made sure that people were fed. And a few years ago, we as a, a church decided to, to help feed people as well. In our gospel lesson, the disciples wanted to send the people away to go to their towns and villages and buy their own food. But as the saying goes, Jesus didn't turn people away and neither do we. Now, we don't know if Jesus is assuming that they cannot afford to buy their own food or if it is just too much for some families to go and get food after being out in the evening. But Jesus decides instead of sending them away to purposefully and intentionally invite them to sit down with him and partake of a blessed meal. Now, in John's uh, gospel and in John's version of this story, it's actually a small boy who gives the food to be used to be multiplied. But, but in this gospel, the disciples are asked to provide the food. In this passage, Jesus gathers the food around him and he, he looks up to heaven and he blesses the food and then he breaks the bread. Notice the similarities between that breaking of the bread and his time of communion with his disciples and our time of communion when we bless and I bless the elements and then together we break bread. You know, any time that Jesus eats and provides food. He, like, like my old youth group, provides both that spiritual and physical nourishment. He, pro he provides a blessing and he provides the sustenance to keep people energized. And Jesus doesn't turn people away. He invites everyone to sit down and enjoy a meal and their time together. As I mentioned a few moments ago, we as a church family also realize that there, there's a need. And so we are doing our best to meet that need. We saw the need and we're doing something about it. You know, we regularly support our, our food pantry and the monthly distributions, but we also uh, last year began to provide a, a warm meal for people to come and sit down and just enjoy time together. Most of the people who come to that meal are clients of the food pantry distribution, and that's that's who our, our main clientele, what we were hoping to be. But, but I also encouraged our own church members to come as well. This was not necessarily for a meal for those who had no food, but was a meal for fellowship. Maybe for people who are living alone by themselves or maybe a young family just to come and get a night out and see church people besides on a Sunday morning and, and then even help out a little bit. It is always good when we can come together with people that we know, but it is even better when we can come together with people that we don't know and we can break bread together. Now we have continued those meals for the past two years and I'm so glad that other churches in the area have also jumped on board. And now if it weren't for this pandemic, I think we had like eight or nine out of 12 months where the churches were able to feed people. It may only be one night during the month, but that one night allows folks to get out of their homes, find a place for food and fellowship, knowing that people love them and welcome them and feed them. Now, it, 
as I was working on this sermon this week and reading through the, the passage again and again, I, I realized that preaching about feeding people when, when the scripture is about feeding people seems to be a little bit on the nose. But I also want to mention something else that I learned while working on this passage. And we must look at why Jesus was on the move at this time. You see, he was always migrating from one place to another. He was never trying to be the pastor of one location or one church, but he was trying to be the preacher and the teacher for the whole world, or, or at least his little corner of it. And he was moving this time because he had learned about the death of his friend, John the Baptist. You know, like some of us, when sad and in a time of grieving, he, he wanted to be alone. We can almost picture him finding out this sad news, putting his head down and, and walking away, and just keep walking. And there are times when we just need to take a minute to be by ourselves as well. But you see, Jesus was mourning the loss of his friend. He was saddened not just by the loss, but by the reason and the, the tragic way that John lost his life. Sitting in jail, then getting captured and being beheaded. Jesus wanted to take the time for himself. He wanted to be in mourning, but he also didn't run away and let people without something. So as we have been away from people for such a long time now, there are times when I don't w want any more time away at all. And we just want to get back to worshiping and being together and having those community meals and, and eating with people and communing with people all in the same building instead of 17 or 20 or 25 different cars. But since that's not the safest thing to do right now, we are still finding ways to stay connected. And that's the important part. And that that's where Jesus comes in. Like I said before, if we talk about feeding people, the message, the message is a little too direct. Jesus fed people, we should feed people. Now that, that is important too. And that, that's a great lesson for us to learn and a good rule to follow. You know, clothe the naked, feed the hungry, uh, give drink to those who are thirsty, love the marginalized. Those are all very good things to do, but but we also need to realize that we can and we should be bringing people together in whatever way that may look like right now. We need to make sure that if, if you are comfortable and, and ready, that you can be there for someone else. This passage gives us a miracle and in what I like to call this, this, this great potluck. It also is a story that we need to make sure that we take time for people. That we don't turn people away. And that a time of fellowship can be had over a meal or just good conversation. That physical and that spiritual and even emotional support. Our prayer meetings on Wednesday nights, uh, I'm recording this on Thursday. Last evening, we had um, nine people plus myself. And they are such great opportunities to just check in with each other and to be in prayer together. And last night, I read the scripture about baptism when Jesus was baptized. And then we had a short discussion on what baptism is and how some of us were baptized as babies and others were baptized as adults. And so they remember that moment and they remember how special it was. But it was just a time to be together, 
Enjoy each other's company. Celebrate with each other. Lift each other up in support when we are feeling down. We are able to stay connected. Jesus took the time to be with people and made sure to feed them with his words and feed them with a blessed meal. It wasn't communion in the sense that we use the word, but the people who came together to be in fellowship with each other, they, they were in their own time of communion together. So let us always take time for each other. Feeding each other with meals. Feeding each other's spirits. Feeding each other with support and love when we may be feeling down, like maybe at the passing of a loved one, but also when we can come and celebrate together too. May the Spirit continue to be with you in your work, apart from each other, as well as together in the Spirit of God. Amen.